Okay. Your intro looks very uh, mystery science theater. <laughs> Thank you. I worked very hard on it. Um, and then I can do <coughs> this one. Yay! And then we're watching you watch my intro. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's disgusting. I like it. <laughs> All right. Hello, hello. Welcome back to some kind of talk show. I'm Tyler, and joining with me today is Even. How's it going? Hi, hi, hi. I made a robot. <laughs> yes, he has made a robot, and today we are also talking about the Warforged of D and D lore. Um, I guess in general we're just talking about like sentient machines. I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't fully know a lot about the Warforge because I was never that interested in like the Eberron era of of games. <laughs> so, do you are you able? Would you be able to fill me in on some of that information? Yeah, I mean, I could try. I've read <laughs> some stuff. Yeah, just, but, a, right. just a quick little <laughs> summary, oh. I guess. <laughs> We're well, not so quick. You can go as fast as you want. Well, Eberron is like, it's a awesome, like, uh, I guess, world setting uh, made in, uh, in the D and D like uh, game uh, system, and it was made in like three point five. And we've moved on to four, and then fifth edition. And they just recently come out with cool stuff for fifth edition. But almost every time they redo it, uh, something that's really cool that's that's awesome about like. Eberron is they really try to set a specific stage of like when things happened and like a couple big events uh, of things that happen and then like some questions of like we don't know where things are going to go so there's a lot of like openness but the Warforged themselves um, they are they're like a new creation and like one of the biggest things that just happened is that like in this like the history of Eberron there was like a big giant fucking war that lasted a long time and like uh, promoted. So there were so many advances that happened because of it, and the Warforged were one of them of uh, sentient uh, uh, constructs that could help fight in this war. And then eventually, the war came to a standstill with some gigantic like uh, a bomb like explosion, and everyone went like, "Man, this is weird," and we don't know why this happened. It wasn't like somebody chose to, and so then they're at a standstill. And so the Warforge are at an interesting part because everyone has declared that there is going to be no more war. Now we have all these like sentient robots that are like, I think at the oldest, like 30, and at the youngest, like, uh, like two or one, like just made at the end of the war. Hmm. Um, and nobody knows how long they can live for. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows what they should do. Some people think that they're okay. They don't even know what they should do because they they were crafted with a purpose, uh, and now that they're they're kind of just stuck. And so I think that's what's something that's awesome about Eberron is they do they do have some solid history, but then they also have some they they have some questions for both the players and the DM to come up with. And there's I don't know. I mean, there's better and worse, but there's no right and wrong way to take it. So I think the Warforge is a pretty cool place uh, of trying to find out, you know, who you are and, you know, what what is life to you? Uh, like, do you, and when you know you had a purpose, have a purpose. If I remember correctly, wasn't the like there there was there was an event called the, like the Last War, right? And so now they're yeah. in a so so now they're in like a an era of P like. Like un yeah. like uneasy peace kind of a thing. Yeah, there has to be some sort of turmoil. Otherwise, how do you have like battle encounters, right? I guess there's mm -hmm. still like petty theft, <laughs> petty theft for your players to, to <laughs> deal with. Uh, the height of D and D petty theft. Um, so many skill uh, checks on that one. Just in sessions, all about petty theft. <laughs> But so in the in the extremely light kind of researching that I try to do just to kind of refresh what I what I thought I knew about this area, um, and also so I don't get distracted later on with the same sort of really cheesy 
line. Um, so is, is every are they still making War Fours, or after the end of the war, they were just like, all right, we have no more need of these guys, and we're just, so we're not going to make any more. Yeah. So another thing that happened, or not happened, but that's like Eberron esque, is that there's like these magical families with people with uh, magical birthmarks that make them better at certain things, um, and they're like. Uh, they've created mo- monopolies, but there's also like rules and sanctions that say things like you know you can't you can't have a standing army, you can't own property and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but in the wake of this war, maybe they're kind of uh, it is another question of like who's going to stop them if they want to, besides tradition. But one of the families is the family of like makers, the uh, House Cannon, um, and they made the war forges. Like, um, but the 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 creation forges uh, I believe is what the war forges were like made in um, those have all been shut down but that's also another question uh, up in the Eberron thing of like have they really been shut down can somebody reopen them like legally they've been shut down <laughs> okay uh, mm-hmm it's way cool strange I don't know I have a uh, I'm playing in a game right now with uh, somebody that's playing a Warforge, and I love his take on it um, because what he wanted to play is he wanted to play a Warforge uh, Blood Hunter, which is like um, kind of an extra class that utilizes their blood to hunt out evil things, uh, and like that powers their magic. But since he's a robot and he's got no fucking blood, he actually just has like vials and stuff that he keeps in him. Oh. <laughs> uh, and so, like, after, like, we kill stuff, he collects their blood so he can utilize that. Um, and so that, I don't know, it's a weird sort of thing of that weird spot of, like, I don't know, is he, like, how can, how can you be a robot and, like, use blood magic? And how can you be a robot and use divine magic and other, like, weird bits of things? Like, my current character, or, uh, actually, he kind of is in a state of being dead right now. But my character that I was playing in that campaign... Like, uh, the Warforge told us that he used to be, uh, used to be, not be a Warforge, and that's not like canon to the war, uh, to Eberron necessarily, but in our world, it, I don't know, it is for him. Um, and so we had to do some like blood sacrifice, or we saw somebody do some blood sacrifice where they poured some blood on this thing, uh, the blood reformed back into the thing that it used to be, except angry, and then attacked them, and then they killed it, and that would open up the door. So he did that. And I watched him like pour out the blood that he thinks is his blood because he's like a bumpkin kind of character, and it turned into like a hobgoblin, and then he killed the hobgoblin. <laughs> I was like, man, you were a lot fuzzier before that. And, he, and him just being an awkward robot went mm-hmm, open door. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> and so he just thinks that he used to be a bugbear. We, we don't know otherwise. Interesting. Or I think, or my character does. I think everyone else is a little bit smarter than my character, but that's how it goes. Yeah, I think, um, like as a as as the as the game master, it's really weird to have to introduce these kind of um, character options because then it raises all sorts of like weird existential existential questions that you as as um, the you know surrogate god of your world, you know, you kind of have to determine like, well. Let's see. What am I? What am I willing to allow with this character? Can a Warforged be a cleric? Like it. It is sentient, but does it have the capacity to believe? <laughs> or is mm-hmm. it just? Or is it? Um, there was one argument that I heard um, a while ago. For I don't remember. It was some other. It was some other thing though. But um, it drew back to the Final Fantasy Tactics calculator class. Mm-hmm. So in the sense that the the faith the faith but it was cleric based so it wasn't so much that the faith was this kind of like blind belief of like oh you know I'm just going to step out onto this ledge and my you know my faith and my deity will allow me to you know step out safely it was mm-hmm. this I have everything so calculated that 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 is my faith the calculation in and of itself is my faith and so you know and and that's what lets me go out there hmm was... that's an interesting one i think a d and uh, or eberron is also it's a weird one i'm not like i'm pushing eberron now and it sucks but i've been reading like uh 
uh, like things by one of the original writers um, that are like at some points not canon and he reminds us all that. But then uh, other things that are canon that he's like talked about uh, and some of it has been like something that's cool is that faith in Eberron for a variety of like reasons and we won't get too far of it is an important aspect because the gods do not manifest. Nobody ever has seen a god. Like, uh, and so in that world, much like our world, uh, you you have to just have faith. Like, and things will happen based off of your own ability to believe so. Um, but also, I mean, it leaves up to the DM to describe how and stuff. But is Eberron the the era of with the spell scar, or is that um... no? Is that still that, Faerun? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Never abide. Yeah, you um, should have done that. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I've had to, I've had to like, gorilla adult. I haven't been able to like nerd for a while. Um. All right. Well, Ooh, we adult. can we can move away from things like existentialism and faith and we can go into more form and function so um i've done you know so again i've done you know a very light cursory search of the very of what variations could pot or possibly exist for a uh, war forged you know what things are yeah. possible when you put pen to paper but they there seems to be a commonality with a lot of the form of what a war forge looks like to someone mm -hmm. is that written in the book or is there just like it's just simpler to just kind of have it be this um this way so the way that i'm the way that i'm referencing is it has a very um marvel-esque kind of iron man or um ultron sort of face um it's always generally humanoid in torso two legs two arms and though the arms should have an asterisk next to them because I've seen those swapped out for a variety of other things. But generally, head, torso, legs, usually the same. Yeah, and I think there's, it's, all, it's always been this like primarily humanoid-looking looking thing. And I think that's just for reasons of, uh, I don't know, just kind of like game balance. Um, uh, that they and also just like you play a humanoid, it's kind of hard to like do certain things if you have four legs, and and they even come into the issue of like I don't know, are they armor? Do they wear armor? Can you wear armor on top of armor? And if they can wear armor on top of armor, then can like an elf just put on two suits of armor? <laughs> like, <laughs> so I think there's some mechanic things where they just go like, yeah, here's the standard basic vanilla boring two arms two legs. I got an Ultron face and no nose. Um, which that's a weird thing, because I've never tried to see if my Warforged can smell something. Um, <laughs> but uh, but I think it's up to the, the DM to decide, like, are you cool with multiple arms? What does that mean? Like, are you cool if they can have, like, uh, like roller skate legs? Uh, <laughs> can it be on a unicycle? Like, I don't know. Yeah, and is that, so... like, all that bad of a thing? I think it'd be really cool. Uh, to do that, but I think the hard thing would be for me if I were DMing it. Um, like, how much do I want this to be like a tech sort of game where you the my Warforge can be super crazy, and then if my Warforge can be super crazy, does that mean my players can be? Can I buy an extra Warforge arm to like snap onto my bits? or extra legs or is there some kind of balance thing like if he can have extra arms can i have extra arms hmm. so but i think it's cool have you ever heard of uh shadow run yes okay so shadow run is a uh is another cool game that has uh it's it's like super uh future uh um like futuristic now, I think it's supposed to be set in like 2062, so it's just coming up. Yeah, it's, but, a lot, uh, it's a lot less steampunk and a lot more kind of, uh, I would argue, like Star Trekky or <laughs> like that kind of technology era. Yeah, something like that. But there's a class in there um, um, called the, I think, Street Samurai or whatever. 
Um, and since things are run more tech-like, there's like there's classes that are all about hacking into stuff and getting database. There's ones that uh, can uh, hack into robots and stuff. And then other ones that are like there for other reasons. There's people that can do magic. And to keep up with all this like crazy tech things, things like street samurai, they're I mean it's just a fancy term for a dude that like uh, for like a thug dude that has some honor. But mechanically, there's a lot of like they get upgrades often it's a common thing just like uh, and it's more or less like a, yeah i just got to keep up with these other dudes that can shoot fucking fireballs like <laughs> so i gave myself fucking like robot arm like so i can give him a mega fucking punch and like i have unicycle legs because i got tired of buying shoes like uh. <laughs> so i think it'd be cool to like rethink eberron um if i were to run it and try to think it in this kind of like tech thing where like people can get tech body upgrades, kind of like, I guess, full metal alchemists and they're like, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, but also then there's full fucking robots. And there should be <laughs> demi robots. Um, yeah, so what on on the whole idea of like hammer fist, um, what are what are some alterations to the limbs that you've that you have seen? So uh, I mean, you know, classically, we haven't seen many different alterations to the legs, but um, like mm -hmm. the arms, like you mentioned, like hammer fist. Um, I've seen probably the the one that I, I I've seen the most, but I personally disagree with are the um, knife knives for hands. Mm -hmm. Knife knife singular knife for hand. <laughs> um, as in the punch knife? You don't like that? Oh. No, like the like instead of like it's not even instead of where the hand is, it's where the wrist is. Like there's a knife there. So really your only your only like rotational and pivot point is the elbow. And I I don't know, I just really don't like that concept. Um mm. if it were if it were able to bend at the like at the actual wrist like sure it would be like conceptually it would be a lot weaker and it might look weirder from a distance but it's a lot more functional as far as like chopping things and stabbing things than it would be if like the only anchor the only you know um pivot point were the elbow uh but I don't know if someone about that. I think if you wanted to give a good like punch and stuff I don't know I guess there are like examples of like punch daggers um, where you hold you like humans actually hold in their hands like the guitar uh, and uh, others but yeah I, I'm also thinking of ver versatility too because like you said um, a lot of these things are existing after after a war right so their yeah. their main function isn't necessarily combat anymore I mean that's that's a that's a good function to have but it's not their main function anymore right so I'm thinking more towards like utility. So like if you want if you want a warforged helper to like cook something or something, you know, it's you can't really do fine finite chopping or fine tune chopping with mm -hmm. with at the elbow. I guess a, I guess a professional chef would argue with me that a lot of that does come from the elbow, but I think you do need some wrist dexterity in order to get the accuracy that you're looking for in a in a diced cucumber or lettuce. <laughs> uh, anyways, that's I think weird... that could that could be kind of cool, <laughs> um, but uh, I think if we're talking about like canon uh, kind of sources, they were made for war, and I think that's part of that interesting uh, set of like what the fuck do we do with these like war machines like. Because right. so that, all the you can do to... is chop. Like, <laughs> right. Some... So, so that's <laughs> the thing that I have to remind myself is that even though these things were, you know, now they have to exist after the war, um, like you kind of alluded before, um, almost almost none of them, you know, there's almost none that are being made after this war. Yeah. So. Or there should be none. Oh, there. Uh, like canon wise or legally i guess yeah so it's yeah so so my my comment previously was more or less trying to more ignorantly state like 
you know, why can't this tank, why can't this tank park, in, <laughs> park in a, you know, park in a, um, in a parking garage, <laughs> you know, like it should be able to do civilian things, but it kind of has to be modified to do that. So, yeah, um, which I don't know. I don't think there's not a lot of like canon sources to like explain uh, if they if they have like done modifications. modifications to do um, more civilian I think there's things. Yeah, I haven't seen. I haven't seen some things uh, like that, but they don't really need to sleep. So I think they just do regular day labor or stuff. But since the canon way that they are built um, is to look like a humanoid with like hands and fingers, even though I think they have like less digits, I think they're like I don't know three or two. Yeah, so that um, so that was always the other the other thing that was weird to me. I mean, you know, art you know art, artists do what you want. Um, it's totally you know don't don't I'm I'm just a I'm just a small little peon over here. But I always found it weird to remove the hand that has at least four digits on it three digits on it and um replace it with a weapon that it could have easily held yeah and it's well i think they something. do i think that's it i think part of it though is that there's a structural strength if all you're going to do if your job is to just punch somebody as hard as you can and stab into them why can't it just be a, a stabby thing Oh, and but also a lack of it. disarm factor. Like you mm -hmm. can't disarm you can't disarm it if it's attached to your wrist. <laughs> yeah. I, I could see I could see that. And there are, um, and I don't remember how early it was, but now with fifth edition, there are uh, you know, you have your like sub races. Uh, and when they first came out, when they were like experimenting and coming up with like playtest stuff. The Warforged didn't, but now it does. And their sub races are your a skirmisher like Warforged, it means that you're like a little bit quicker and stuff. You're like a juggernaut Warforged, I think is the term, and you're like you're extra beefy and good for punching shit. But then there's the specialist Warforged that is skilled and trained in things, and that you are meant to be a diplomat or a spy or uh, like you have like or, or a mage like you're just a big walking wand really <laughs> wand you you are you are you are the you are the walking artillery um which yeah, i think so... gives us some possibilities because so the old ones and I, I think this is new um so that there's not really a lot of art about those ones um although if you look at i guess the book um uh the, the the book for the the, the fifth edition one, it is. Uh, that Warforge is skinny and different and different from the ones that we've seen of like the big, uh, kind of beefy muscle armor, uh, and that one probably could do magic. And probably has wands that it can hold, or like maybe it has wand fingers. And yeah. Wand so. Um, in my so when when I was looking through some images in Google, um, I did just generally say that a lot of what I saw was this this similar form. But in saying that, um, now that you mention it, uh, there there were so I I was excited to see not so much them getting beefier. Like I don't remember them getting any larger than like the standard Warforce that you see on the cover of a lot of books and stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, there were a couple though that I saw that that gave me some some ex excitement and intrigue in that instead of being bigger and beefier they were slimmer and looked more agile like fencers in fact I think one of them was more or less looking like a like a League of Legends Fiora type character mm -hmm. um, you know with the little damn it that little that little one shoulder cape thing has a name I don't remember what it is though, but you know, it actually even had that thing draped off of one side, and I think it did have. I my eyes might have mistook it for a cane, but I think it was a rapier. Yeah, actually, I think I know the the one that you're talking about. It's yeah. kind of like. But that but that concept is always really cool to me that you know you do have these these um, different you know these diff these warforged for these different purposes instead of just this like this um this cut and paste one you know one one warforged for all uses type of a thing 
I mean, both both concepts are fine, but uh, the one has more sort of inherent uh, interesting variation, where the other one has more kind of like you have to work for the for the variations in them hmm. type of a thing. If that makes sense. Um, so what like do you mean? What, you know, like so, like in one, just in designing the Warforge, like in how the body is, like you kind of build the 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 detail and the intrigue from that, you know. So it's like if you make it really thin, and you you know, and you make it like a you know like a fencer's kind of stature, then you know you you just looking at it without reading a description, you know, just looking at that, you go, oh man, like that one looks like it, you know, it could do a lot of like like espionage or like you know. Mm -hmm. all this other stuff just by looking at it whereas the other one you kind of have to look at that and you go well i can see what it can do but if we remove its arms and we put something out you know you have to kind of think of what other sort of things you can do with it so it's there's more effort that you have to put into the to the to the variations as far as you know your imagination goes but i think that's that's an awesome thing and kind of it's it's kind of interesting thinking about to bring it back to that existential part and like the fact that this is a role playing game, you're supposed to like play with it. It's like, what do you what do you do with the fact when you look in the mirror and you're like, uh, uh, and you're like, you know what? I'm not like fucking slow. It's kind of like, and you figure out like I'm gonna do this, this, and this. But then how do you do that when you're a ro like sentient robot thing and you look at like, all right, I have not been upgraded for slow. Uh, I am built specifically for <laughs> uh, for running. Like, uh, and then when do do you, but now you've been given a choice. And you're like, I could, I could do something else. Like, I think that'd be a funny, a funny quest for a robot, uh, for uh, for like a warforge. Of like, what do you? What is your ultimate goal? Like, my ultimate goal is to get enough money so I can buy Swope Package Number Seven. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, do, you, I don't know, like, do you remember the old? Uh, I think it was Pixar, but there was a film that was actually just robots and. Um, like that was almost their entire premise was like how do we get or for at least the longest time it was how do we get enough money for you know not to pay off the mortgage on this house but to kind of upgrade you know to give ourselves upgrades and fix our bodies and then the whole plot premise was then this one guy comes in and says hey instead of upgrading your body just get a new unit and then you know there's this whole thing. Was that, wasn't that, was that the one that, that was just called robots yeah well that okay. yeah i wasn't yeah that wasn't a description that was me trying to say the title but it sounded like the description <laughs> and i realized halfway through and i was just like i'm just gonna keep going yeah, yeah. okay <laughs> yeah. yeah i think it's i don't know i think it's fun i'm cool with all these upgrades and stuff like really i think there's i don't know i think i'm the kind of person that like if you could genetically modify yourself in like a safe and reasonable way and just like you know what tomorrow i'm gonna have like straight green hair fuck yeah and i think i want mismatched eyes i'm down for that like or like if i could buy myself some gills uh <laughs> i'm just like like that'd be awesome and so there's a little bit of that that i wish uh that i think the warforges and other like systems that allow for like robot kind of things to be in there it's like Awesome. Sounded, sounded a lot like some people in um, forums that I've read in that um, frequent. Uh, what's it called? It's um, Half Life or something. What is that one website where they're just, you know, because they've got their little avatar thing that that walks around. And they go, oh man, like I need like you know, I need like a thousand credits in order to change my hair color. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't know. I think of Sims, but yeah. <laughs> well, that's also true. Um, but I guess that's what you already do in D&D, kind of. Like, you get feats, and you upgrade, and you get new spells and stuff. So I guess this is just another way to look at it. And, like, the strength really is that existential to me. Because, really, it's all the rest of it's stats, and everyone can have stats. Yeah, I think for, for a role-playing game concept, the Warforged was actually a very solid creation by... You know, like it was a genius creation by someone because it's weird how something how how 
this machine, something that's gen that's generally seen as being very static, you know, it's very reliably just there, has so much fluidity and <laughs> and you know how how easily it can change and just mm -hmm. kind of fit an imagination. It's really cool. Um, so it's 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 not a Warforged, but uh, in a game that I'm playing right now, um, we've we found a Shield Guardian. So that's you know it's the predecessor, I guess, to the concept of the Warforged. Uh, not sentient, but it follows a lot of the same sort of um, imagination gray areas, and we exploited one of them in the sense that we got um, we got like way too much um, adamantine from this one dwarf for doing a job for her, and we sat there and we we're like, all right, so we can either make one suit of armor, one weapon, and then I was just like. Um, for for the party's consideration, I do have this thing that's made of adamantine. Can we just add that to my dude and just give him like two extra arms? And everyone's just like, "Yeah, we're doing that one. That's the one. That's the one we're doing." <laughs> so now I've got this like I've got this um this metallic Goro just kind of walking around with us, and it it just it literally Jeez. does what Goro does. It's really good at grabbing people and then punching them with the two extra arms. Except um, the to to kind of balance it a little bit just to make it not not so abuse like to not make it feel as abusing of the game mm -hmm. rules as it as it kind of may might be. He made it so that those two arms are breakable. So normally. You know the 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 shield guardian really only takes damage when it you know when it loses HP, but it repairs itself over time. Mm. These arms actually need me to go in, or you know someone else to go in and actually like retune these things if like if they get damaged or if you know I roll a one for example. Okay. <laughs> and you know they kind of crunch in or something. So because you know we had to manually add these to the thing you know they they weren't these two extra arms weren't created or weren't added as a part of the ritual that normally creates a shield guardian i like the idea of like it having like its arms uh that it just uses to grab like sad people uh <laughs> um but then on the top of like your sheer, uh, shield guardian, you've just like made adamantium like flaily arms. <laughs> <laughs> and just like we about like it's not actually sentient, so that's why you have to fix these, and he doesn't know how to fix them. But he just like whips these things around until they like hit. hit <laughs> they're just with big. It. They're just like big like cat toys that are just like yeah. those things on springs. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I mean, who the fuck is a mechanic amongst your group? That's I don't know. Funny. Maybe you have. Well, a mechanic, well, but... one of yeah, one of our party is actually messing with the um, what's it called? The unearthed arcana wizard class. Um, the arcane. I don't remember what the other thing is called. Tinker artificer. Artificer. I don't think it goes by the artificer name though, because that was like way old. Um, well, what is arcana? Is he? Is he a wizard? Yeah, he's a wizard. Okay. Uh, but I, I'm saying that it, it it evolved from the Artificer, but I think it's under a different title now, I want to believe. Yeah. Okay, so then there was, like, the it School might, of Invention. I might be wrong. Maybe. Yeah, School of Invention. That's the one. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, he he helped. He helped with the arms. <laughs> He also made he also made a little mech suit for his cat familiar. As you do. <laughs> That's As a really, you do. It was a really interesting thing that the DM was just immediately like, "Yes, I am definitely down for that idea. Let's let's workshop this." <laughs> so Yeah, but that that's the first time that's the first time that I've ever heard a player say um, I want to make something for my familiar that only has one HP. <laughs> so, 
So. Well, that's because most people are terrible and don't actually appreciate animals. <laughs> well, monsters. Th this is true, but mostly because what I'm used to hearing is I'm going to send Mr. Bigglesworth or whatever they name their familiar in ahead to kind of scout out whatever whatever that red <laughs> barrier is and see if it hurts us or not. <laughs> um. So the one thing that I am kind of disappointed in seeing is, or having not seen in my cursory search of images for Warforged, are, um, uh, what's it called? Not imitation, but it's, um, it, 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 it should look like other things. So, so far they're all very humanoid, right? But I would like, I would really like one to just be like the predator model and have it be really based after like um, a lizard folk or something. But those probably don't exist in Eberron. They do. Oh, <laughs> they're in a specific. Well, I mean, they're across areas, but they do. They or just like, weren't really important before. <laughs> or like the dreadnought class warforce that just looks like a big mechanical dragon. <laughs> You know, like in in this in this grand war, how has no one thought to make just like the dreadnought warforged and just have this big this big mechanical dragon that listens to you? I think I think they that falls into that weird area of like uh so the warforge is like the most sentient and like I guess the uh, um. I don't know, optimizable one, and being egotistical, uh, if like you're the, like the humans that made them, they're like, yeah, humans are the most versatile, so we built it like a human, so it can do human stuff and use all the human things that we have. Mm -hmm. But uh, but they still have golems. They still like the the house Kenneth like uh, crest uh, is their crest is a gorgon, which is a terrible terrible name because. Uh, oh, the, the mechanical producer, bull. Not the mechanical bull. Not right. the not the snake-haired lady. <laughs> no, <laughs> so not her. It is the mechanical bull. So Got they it. acknowledge even in that that there are tons of other robot things. Just the Warforge is where they streamlined it all and they made sentient. Like before that, they had golems and shield guardians, but those things just listened to orders. But that means whoever got to give them orders, like. Uh, had control, and if it, they were doing something that was outside of their orders, they didn't really like respond or know how to do things. So, in that con, in this, the idea that war is a dangerous place to be, and you need people that are expendable, flexible, and can think on their feet, the warforge is that like even spot. But I think there's like that there's that question of like ethics and stuff, and other things like if we make a big giant robot like dragon thing that can think and do things on its own and we've just made a big giant dragon <laughs> that's true <laughs> but no I, th I think that'd be cool uh, if, if to kind of explore those things and the, explore those different shapes yeah, like I think so... something that happened in Eberron uh, that they didn't I don't think they explored but they also wanted to leave it open because there are like places that uh, that are super low tech that have probably never seen a Warforge or any technology like that. Uh, but they could have really pushed the technology everywhere to where there are mechanical fucking like cats, and then mechanical dragons, and then there's various degrees of sentiency uh, between all those things. Yeah, and for for consideration to all the internet DMs out there. Um, it could get very blade right like it, in you saying all that that got me this gave me an, the idea of a very blade runner-esque type thing where someone's you know even though in canon the warforge is very you know it's very utilitarian and it's um it's been made but you know none are needed to be made anymore there could be this kind of underground black market, you know, scientist or whatever that could be making these alternative warforged, you know, these ones that look like kobolds, these warforged that look like um, lizard folk and are kind of running amok out there. And so you need to go and kind of, you know, systematically get rid of these these things that are terrorizing, terrorizing the streets at night 
and then find who's making them and find out that, uh oh, dun dun dun. <laughs> Turns out there's a big mechanical dragon down there. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And it's gonna escape, and now you have your and now you have your final battle with you know that you need dirigibles for and all these other things to try to bring down this big mechanical dreadnought dragon. So wouldn't that be cool? I don't know. We got a game to play. <laughs> I think you know, something that I would love is that I think like I'm I'm falling in love with like Eberron. Uh, in general, but also thinking about other ways that this could work and like how I could change it to be something something else like uh, like starting just after the last war is the you know the the way the canon way that you're supposed to start the game um, but that doesn't have to be it could be a different timeline further in the future when there are more robot things and there where there are different issues or before or during the war um, but like I think it'd be way cool to to have a more tech heavy uh, and like uh, thing. Like uh, I I love D anD D, and this is where I started. And then Eberron is where I'm like starting to branch off into now because my current DM chose that world, which was cool. And I did a little research in there. But like, couldn't I take some of the rules and some of the things from like Shadowrun and some of like the customizable like abilities of like people, but have that in Eberron. And there could be people that, like, their magic specializes on robots, and they have no clue how to fix a human body, but they have magic that fixes robot bodies. Which, like, current 5th edition D&D, um, or Eberron, like, when you use a heal, heal spell, it works on whatever if it's alive, uh, robots included. Which is kind of weird. To me, it breaks that illusion, but maybe because I just haven't come up with a good solution for how heal magically stitches together these like would like sinews that they have mm. but it could be it could be really cool and that could be an interesting venue of like oh you have your you know your technomancers and then you have your like arcanomancers and uh, uh, thurgists and things like that and that there there is a separation but then I don't know can you have I don't know is there divine versions of robotic healing like which could be yeah. cool <laughs> um one of the things that the the player in my game with the um school of intervention kind of does is to kind of and i'm glad that he actually goes through the effort to try to ex- this is tom by the way <laughs> um, tom. Okay. He, he tries to you know he tries to um he actually does go through the effort of trying to explain how this thing, this this machine that he pulls out of his hat, actually does these little effects and stuff. So like, does he put he it has, in his hat? Uh, he, he that's just where he pulls it from. Uh, yes. Because <laughs> you know, if you're a wizard, but you do all these interventions, like, you gotta you gotta have some fun with it. Get throw some classics in there, you know. Um, so he had this he had this one machine that said that it could it could kind of mimic a, a, a healing touch spell and he he said so the way that the way that it, it so first off it, it's it's not a spider like the other things that I've been pulling out of it's it looks more like a like a snail kind of a thing and it just kind of slaps on his arm and just starts to kind of secrete this salve over as it's like kind of slimes its way up this guy's you know wound and I was like that's gross but I like that you gave me that visual <laughs> that's really cool the thing instead of just saying like oh it's this little tiny sphere with a helicopter whirl that just kind of shines a light on the thing and it stitches up the wound <laughs> uh, yeah no I think <laughs> I, and I think that's the hard thing sometimes about uh, wanting like these weird aspects in D and D of like I want some rules. How does this robot thing work? Um, but it takes away from some of the different strange creativity of other people. So it is up to the D, uh, to characters to do things. And like I think sometimes it seems uh, fair to. I don't know. I think it'd be interesting to give like bonuses, to give advantage, to give extra points if you describe stuff and just like to kind of have that as a mechanical thing. Be like, all right, like we all want to be here in this world with you. 
Uh, so you need to add a little bit, add a little bit for all of us, uh, right. so that we can imagine like how does your your magic work. Yeah, this is my stomping foot. I like this. Is, wait, is that is that machine stitching a third leg onto the guy's, or a third calf onto this guy's leg? Why not? <laughs> so you not so not this only did he really fucking hate spiders, and he's gonna <laughs> stomp the shit out of him. So, because in my mind, it was it was kind of building off of what we were discussing about the healing snail. So I was like, all right, so this guy injured his leg. And this machine is healing it, but not only is he healing it, but it's like this leg was inferior, so I'm gonna add this other leg to this leg. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. It's a good one. <laughs> so weird. Um, is that is that what I'm looking at, or what? I I don't know. I, we were talking about like upgrades and uh, other upgrades we could have on people and stuff. So I gave this guy I don't know an extra powerful leg with like super I don't know I was like thinking like a of like springy openness of, of a calf and that had to be heavy to like really get some good stomping in. Uh... but I think it would fall off of him so he needs this like I don't know power girdle <laughs> <laughs> just a little uh, little weightlifting belt to kind of keep everything grounded yeah, I mean, you don't want to throw your back out while you're killing some like giant spiders. So in Eberron, uh, do people? So in Eberron, do people replace like injured or removed body parts with with machinery? Uh, yes, there are some some canon uh, examples of those, but I don't think a lot of people use them, or I don't think that they like they show up that often. Uh, uh, I think I think it's one of those things that you. Like, uh, magic items are not supposed to be rare, but in all D&D, &D, they're kind of rare, uh, like mundane magic items. Uh, they always make magic items so high. So I think sometimes there's a problem of, like, you want a magical arm? Yeah, you have to be level, like, 13 to have a magic, to be able to even save up that much money to have a magical, like, robot arm. But I don't know, if we were really coming out of some epic fucking war, uh, I think a lot of people would have prosthetics and that these should be commonplace and maybe not that often awesome but like you know i have this robot leg and it's kind of lightweight i have to clean it sometimes and it's squeaky like <laughs> yeah I, I would imagine that they would use the same technology that they you know they, they discovered in the, with the warforge to kind of you know innovate the prosthetics yeah right. which i think they you know they do i think some people like homebrew it and stuff but i don't think um I don't think it's pretty commonplace that like they don't have like an extra book or as far as I know of like uh, of a bunch of these like mundane semi magic things that they just leave that to the DM to like to be able to do on their own with their players like uh, we have this one um, paladin and just for uh, for shits and giggles he decided that he wanted like you know, his, like, kit comes with, like, a set of javelins. And he decided that he wanted his javelins to um, uh, to be, like, small, like, little cylinders that when he presses a particular button, um, that they then extend out to be long javelins. And then at some point we got some money, and he was all like, hey, could I upgrade these and get, like, extra prongs on the side so they're just, like, uh, tridents? And we're like, fuck yeah, that seems awesome. And it's sad because I wanted to, like, so I think, I think that could totally be a thing that, like, maybe there isn't as many, like, like a long sword is like a, like a Swiss army knife kind of thing <laughs> that, like, pops up. Maybe there are more weapons that fold out and they are these, like, technologically awesome things, but we don't explore. They're, they didn't, like, rewrite every single weapon so that it has now a technical or, like, I don't know awesome new fancy robot bit. yeah players don't don't be afraid to project yourself into you know your dm's story structure but don't over project because then you're obnoxious to everybody else at the table yeah you bastards <laughs> uh i don't know i mean what what would what things would you want to see 
with like war forges and stuff in your game if you had a game so, or in real life if there were these like sentient robot things like how do you want these to, how would you want those to be um in the in the in the three mo in the three minutes that I get to kind of you know think about it I'm I'm immediately very xenophobic <laughs> um I'd be very aware like I imagine myself to be very wary of them, but I'm sure the longer that I think about it, so if you give me like five minutes to kind of like think of this concept, um, I might move away from Terminator and I might go more into what, you know, Eberron kind of establishes. <laughs> so as far as reality goes, you know, because my imagination immediately goes toward the more negative thing first and I have to kind of talk myself through and be like, all right, maybe it's going to be more like you know eberron and then now i can start thinking about all right cool so if it were in real life then you could totally have like can't like like a forever cameraman like there would be so many like youtubers <laughs> and like um irls like twitch streamers that would just absolutely love to have a warforge because can you imagine how amazing it would be to have a a, a, a forever assistant that could also potentially have like a stabilization feature and a gimbal just in his shoulder like areas. And like, see, I think that's an interesting take on it that I think I have too. That I think if I met them, I'd be more like, I don't know, I'd <laughs> I'd be a dick and call it a toaster <laughs> and stuff. Uh, and like then all of a sudden there'd be a whole bunch of like uh, Warforged rights movements of like like excuse me, just because I am a mortal robot thing does not mean that I ha like I get paid less than anyone else and it does not mean that I just have to hold, hold this like like this camera. I so might I have a camera function, but that uh, that doesn't mean <laughs> that I want to take your picture and send it to like... So that actually lets me springboard off into um, a slightly off topic, but it's still the same thing of a relatively sentient organism or sentient machine, which is in the lore of Overwatch. Actually, they have um, depictions of their um, Omnics, and they have you know a lot of them de uh, portray a sentience in the one that we most interact with, which is Zenyatta, but in their cinematics, we also see that there are many other sort of um, robots that are around that um, also portray a certain um, independence from like order and like they actually make decision and stuff like that. And it's very lightly implied that some people even have romantic relationships with these like things, mm -hmm. as much as but like, they're like you walking know. vibrators. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know about that far, but just like a domestic relationship in the sense of like, hey, let's let's like, you know, on paper, let's get married. Let's have a house together. But I'm really very much asexual. <laughs> uh, okay. Sure. Um, I guess you can go into that sort of more red sort of zone. But, you know, let's not for now. <laughs> right, I forget. I have students that could watch this at some point. Uh, <laughs> Hey, if you don't think that they that that thought hasn't at least crossed their mind for at least a three second like second span, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I just I don't need gifts to me, uh, like recordings <laughs> of me happening in class. Oh, that's also true. So, um, but they but within so within Overwatch, you know, they they also have a lot of um, protests and all these other stuff for um, their rights and um, less is it racism still at that point or is it what would that be considered <laughs> what is the terminology sure. uh, for yeah. bias and uh, bigotry yeah i guess bigotry is more or less the general term but um in that universe it's a little more unfair because there is an invasive program that kind of goes in and like you know turns their eyes from blue to red you know for my <laughs> For my easier or for ease of my description and makes them kind of more combative and evil type you know subjectively evil sort of a thing so you know they have to kind of combat that sort of like we're not all evil type you know type argument 
So it's not <laughs> we just... have a kill function, but not <laughs> evil. Not yeah, so, evil. Yeah, so it's not just the... So for, for their universe, it's not so much this, like... You know, we can do the work, but we're not, you know, but we're not just easy labor type of thing. You know, they also have to argue, you know, we are not just easy labor and we're also not killers. <laughs> we're, we're also not, you know, corruptible killers. So, but as far as the Warforge goes, it sounds like there there may have been, there, there should have been an era in which they're like, we're not just, we're not just machines. <laughs> we're, you know, we're not just work, we're not just workforce. Yeah, uh, which there I think there are, and there are movements of there. There's like, uh, and it depends on how you want to talk about it. But there's like, canon. There's some enigmatic figure that's maybe a ghost story. Maybe it's like, a, uh, like people just take up the mantle or robots uh, take up the mantle. But like the Lord of Blades, that's uh, hmm. trying to create a nation and like uh, of just robots and just for robots and try to figure out more clearly i mean it's i don't know they usually take it as like a lot more uh Ooh, that sounds like the beginning of the animatrix yeah we don't want to work for you anymore so we'll make our own our own civilization on the other side of this of the other side of this pond but we'll come over and give you you know and try to provide peace mm -hmm. and then you spit in our face and so we take away everything um right which is kind of kind of cool i like <laughs> i like this I don't know all the interesting possibilities. Uh, so that's if that's if it's in reality. So see, eventually, I mean, it did kind of circle around to a more dark topic. But if you just give me a little while, then I can come over to the side of like, oh man, it'd be so cool to, you know, it would be kind of cool to have it instead of just be like, oh, it's gonna be like Terminator. They're gonna they're gonna rise up and you know strangle me in my sleep and pop my spot my uh, pop my spine socket out at my neck mm -hmm. um, but in within game the things that I like to see when I'm at the table with another person who's or with a person who's playing a warforged is the um, is the attempt at at the very least the attempt to like throw in some other stuff so like hey if can I have like a cavity inside my chest that I can like open up so if someone's like down or something I can like pop them in there and then they're just kind of like in the fetal position in my you know in my chest and then I can still use my arms and stuff or um, you know can uh, I think the most common thing that I've probably heard people try to put on their robots is a jetpack can my mm -hmm. can my warforged fly um that's probably the most common one beyond like what can I replace my arms with is a jetpack. <laughs> Man, that's like that's like old school WB like rendition of where the cameras would go. Like, <laughs> I, just, I just expect I just expect like you to go what the hell and just have like Yak um, Yako and stuff to just walk across the screen and be like eh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't do camera stuff. <laughs> I like. No, I, I like it. It's just. It's very. It, it's just very old. Old school. I think, <laughs> and that that's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think it's. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I should have looked it up, but I don't want to like pull up things. I'm just kind of like doodling. Um, but also, but also within game. So, if, but so that's on the player side. Is that I like to see when people try to, you know, not break the game with their with the with their machines, but just try to change it up a little bit from just like I am, I'm basically an orc or a half orc character, but I'm made of metal and I have personality issues that I can attempt to try to role play. You know, mm -hmm. try to change it up from that to be like, hey, can I? swap out my one human my one humanoid hand for more of like a praying mantis kind of like claw looking thing you know some some abstract Nasty. like that <laughs> um, but if I was running the game what I'd like to um, what I would accept in a game that I was running is almost anything that I've probably seen in any other media. So, for example, we have um, in the Elder Scrolls series, the 
the Dwemer me machinations. So things mm. that roll around on a ball, you know, those are really cool. Um, but if, you know, if a player came to me and said, hey, instead of like treadmills, can I have it be on like a ball or something? I'd be like, okay, well, A, uh, I'm just, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll allow it. Uh, but I warn you, though, that you're probably going to have to spend like a couple weeks trying to like reorganize how your torso attaches to this ball and let it roll. <laughs> and um, so that's A. And then B, uh, you're probably going to have to make a couple more dexterity checks than normal on in certain areas, you know, because it's a ball. <laughs> There's not really a lot of room for like grip and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but also having um, so like you know how the um, the Assassin's Creed like dagger thing kind of works yeah so have that same sort of concept but in like the Warforge's like forearm and have it be more like a sword so he still has the hand but the sword kind of slides out like the Dwemer Sentinel what were those things the ones on Centurion. the ball Centurion, Centurion. So. Um, but then again, you know, but then I go into more to larger things. So like um, in Overwatch, you know, you have Bob, who would be a very good representation of a Warforged in the sense that it's very humanoid. It's not as big as or it's it's a little larger, but it's not like humongous. And he would be more like a juggernaut kind of Warforged thing, but he still has the same kind of representation of face. But, you know, just to see that larger Warforged, you know, hanging around, just be like, whoa, I don't... Like, I know that he's probably built to lift things, and he could probably break me in two. <laughs> mm -hmm. The Warforged Enforcer. <laughs> um... But then um, I would be very interested to try to just go through the entire Mega Man rep, like their whole roster, and just to kind of see how many elements from like Mega Man things can be um, incorporated into the Warforged design. Um, yeah, so just all those. <laughs> I mean, just just as long as it's not as weird as like I want to try to control. Uh, I was about to say as long as it's not something as weird as like I want to control gravity. But I guess if a warforge somehow is able to become a spellcaster, which that's what I wanted to ask you before, was in in cases of them wanting to take a wizard class or something, are they not allowed to? Or they are. how how do they There's cast no... spells? <laughs> um. Well. I don't know how you'd want to describe what what magic is in that game and how that works, but uh, there's no there's no description uh, like uh, necessarily. I don't know like how Warforges make it themselves different. Like technically, if you buy like a magic wand, right? It is a specialized magic wand made from a specialized tree. How couldn't that be something that the Warforge has made with? Like, uh, why don't they, like, can't, can't they just hold the wand? And if magic is a thing that is um, partially just your understandings of the inner working of the world and stuff like that, then how is, uh, like, how is their knowledge any less knowledgeable I guess than like a human mm -hmm. so they don't ever have any particular issue of of casting casting spells in a, uh, like I don't know not in a canon sense like I guess you could as a DM decide like uh, that it is something that runs in your blood so if you don't have blood then you then you can't do magic but why why not why that could be kind of interesting um and maybe your magic maybe like in eberron they kind of don't differentiate very well at least store, like lore wise um what the difference is between divine magic and arcane magic it's just kind of where you believe it comes from kind of whether you understand the uh like the science of it all or whether you understand the uh, uh, 
know, whether it's it's based off of your faith and that your understanding comes from the fact that uh, that divinity uh, and all magic and all like this other power that runs through the world is something that you know comes from the gods or the divine. And so, how come, like, if they can believe enough, then they can just do magic, right? Like, they do divine magic. Yeah, I guess it would be easier to try to rationalize a Warforge doing arcane magic than it would be to draw on divine magic, <laughs> in a sense. Well, they're still they're still doable as far as like the game works, but I'm just, you know, it's just I feel it sounds like it's easier <laughs> to rationalize arcane than it is divine. Like there's still I don't think of... so because there is like how can uh if the the divine is like not it's not a person. No one meets the gods. Nobody the gods don't have a form. The gods are a force that exists. Uh, and everything, like every time you you build something, uh, you like the oh man, I'm like failing on like my religion check. But I think it's like <laughs> Otar, the god of like the forge, is with you. Every time somebody builds up, bring uh, like holds a hammer, that god is with you, whether you believe it or not. Um, and that's how that's how the belief system works. So if a robot wields something, if uh, like or if nature makes it, or if a person makes it, those are all the works of the god because nothing can be made that's outside of the realm of that's, that god's existence. So you turned me onto this um, this web comic like a long time back, but in um, the Gunner Creek Court series. Mm -hmm. So there, uh, it, it's not it's not this exact. Um, it's not this exact concept, but they are going in, or he, she, the artist, <laughs> the they, <laughs> they um, are going in a direction with one with one storyline or one one story arc with this that is very similar to this same type of thing where it's like I am machine, like can I can I believe I I should believe. <laughs> I do mm -hmm. believe type of a thing. And it's really it's really interesting to see the slow kind of um the slow kind of development of this story arc cuz it to me it doesn't really read like they have they have it already like pre-written out, but mm -hmm. it's really mm -hmm. nice to see that when they do when they do pro, uh progress that 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 um that storyline um it does it is very concise and so it, it it it's satisfying to read in a sense in that like, mm -hmm. it's like, oh that's a really cool concept as far as like machines and a, and a certain belief system go um so for reference that is our hour um i'm going to throw up the topic of so what would you want to see in your war forged in either this our reality or within your games that you play or run and then we can either hang it up there or go on a little like a little longer Me? um i think i think in reality and like uh if anybody like watched uh like Westworld, that's an awesome thing. I need to get caught up. But I remember having a conversation with somebody and they had just watched Westworld and they were so scared. Uh, like, I don't know, they were talking to me like, man, don't you think it's weird? Like, we're gonna like fall into like, uh, like degeneration of um, if we have these robots and like, why would anybody wanna have like, wanna build a meaningful relationship with a human being if they could just have like a sex robot or, uh, or other things? And uh, like, and why is there any purpose for a human to exist if there, you know, if there are robots that are better and can be smarter? Uh, and like, I don't know. I think like my response was like, don't you want a smarter, better like sense of existence? Why doesn't? Why is the monopoly of existence a human experience? Like, why is the like the monopoly of intelligence and learning and feeling a human thing? It's uh, I heard it was a really dumb like meme posting, but you are a 
a mine in a bone mech covered in meat armor. <laughs> That's what you are. That's what we all are. We're not hands and bones. Because if you get your hands uh, like cut off, are you somehow not a human? No, you're still a human. If you're a paraplegic, are you somehow not a human? No. And so if we abstract and take that away, and what we really are is we're our thought. And so I like I like these robots. I think they're interesting. I don't know if I'd be the first one to say that I'm going to give up my job because a robot can do it better. I am definitely for the idea of like competition. Uh, <laughs> but then we get into that weird area of like like what I brought up, like street samurai and stuff. Like, um, like if it turns that way, that to be competitive in my world, uh, I have to, I have to take a couple upgrades. Maybe that's a thing that has to happen, or maybe I just be stubborn and I try to see if I can fight that and see if I can, you know, live without ever going to the doctors, <laughs> like I do. <laughs> so I think, I think there's a lot of option that you can. You can enjoy having it there and not have malice. Uh, so I would, I would love for like, I don't know, a variety of ty- kinds of intelligence. But it's one of those think... things. Like, if you're ready for, <laughs> like, once you're smart enough, uh, let's let's have the competitions. But I don't know. <laughs> There's enough room for you, for me, for that guy, for this guy. I don't know. I Some think you like are that. in. I think you are in one of like five jobs that are relatively safe from robots in the sense of like um, it does allow for competition and not just um, what's it called Um, substitution via you know with art and such so it's not like oh this this robot can this this you know this robot can do art well ie a printer (laughs) Um, but you know it's not it's not necessarily an idea of like oh he can do it better so I'm gonna not hire this guy anymore it's all right he can do it better but can you do but can this other you know fleshy body do it in a more interesting way but differently (laughs) also Mm -hmm. but i don't know i mean maybe i'm not in that state that i can say that uh or like i don't know if we had war forges that have uh that like you know learn to think on their feet in a combat situation and assess the things that are coming in and then make the the decision that they think is the smartest I mean that's what you need for art. You need to learn. You need to look and see what's happening out the world uh, in the world. What is uh, what do people want? Um, how many of those people do you want to affect? Uh, where do you leverage the most? Like, yeah, I think I, 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 I shouldn't have I shouldn't have tried to um, elaborate as I did. So the, the more simpler <laughs> the more simpler way of me of put of putting it is um, if a robot tried to go into your line of work, it, it would just be another artist. Whereas yeah. a, a robot trying to go into the um, the production line of you know capping capping to, putting caps on toothpaste bottles, that's that's more that's more of a danger because that's you know that's substitution that's not just competition. Uh, well, in general, uh, all you like uh, I don't know toothpaste bottle cappers out there. Fuck you. Uh, (laughs) uh, You can totally get replaced by robots uh, if they want your jobs. And you can you can try to try to push yourself to become a better and more, I I don't know, a more complex uh, creature that can try to do things. And if you can't, then let the robots take over and you can you can cap as many toothpaste bottles as you want and they'll just deal with the high end stuff. So there, there were uh, a few just, just uh, quick tangent. So there was, there are a few movies that actually do depict this thing. And I think there was one that actually did specifically have a toothpaste cap capper, but robot. the, the one thing, the one thing that always made me, we- that always weirded me out about those depictions within those films was that the capper rarely ever, was handed a manual and asked, okay, so now instead of capping this thing, your job is maintenance. Maintain this thing that is capping. Oh. But as I say that, I think the one film that is in my memory that is actually with toothpaste capping, they actually do 
let that guy try to maintain the thing, but the guy's just like, this is dumb. Like, <laughs> I think there's a De DeVry University, like, short animation, like, commercial that does exactly what you're saying. Maybe. Where everyone's getting replaced eventually, and, like, the person that they're focus focusing on eventually gets replaced, and then she goes and gets a, a technology degree, and she gets back at that same job fixing the robots that took her job. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird, but anyway, so but that that's the most logical kind of thing. Except, I think the 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 end message was that even though, even though that guy was able to kind of regain his job at the same technical position and the same at the same job, um, instead of you know eighteen people capping things, it's eighteen machines, but only one person maintaining those eighteen machines. So that <laughs> now was... we're getting into a weird spot of where yeah, uh, so I I'm, think yes. I'm on the side of I think we need less people in this world. Yeah, so I'm going to move away from that and just say um, Uber drivers, self-driving cars, coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in D&D, &D, in my games, where I like Warforges, is uh, I wish more people that played Warforges, like you said, um, tried to think about, like, what is it, what is it more like to be this, uh, you know, like this sentient automaton that was, that was created, and how do you cope, how does... How are you coping with that? And how are you leveraging or not leveraging it? Like maybe, maybe you're a robot and you're not proud to be a robot. Maybe you like looking like a humanoid. And then like those robots that go really crazy and want to have like unicycle legs and like uh, <laughs> scissor heads, uh, <laughs> cameras on their shoulders are like so into their robotness that it's like, man, you're taking it too far. Um, and I think that'd be a cool spot. Uh, and then where I want, where I want my players, uh, or where I would want to be as a player, is I don't. I'm not sure that I'd want to be, uh, like a warforge. I'm not sure if I'll ever play a warforge. But I would really love to play a person that, like, has, that has like a, like a prosthetic limb, or is totally interested in this, but doesn't know how to like, I don't know, is trying to keep up with. Or it's like, I don't know, maybe I could be a Warforged. That'd be awesome. Like, uh, did you ever play, what's it? Uh, it was the Borderlands, the pre-sequel? No. I've only okay. recently started so, the first one. <laughs> uh, fun game. But in uh, Borderlands 2, you uh, one of the like bosses you end up fighting is this, like, mech human. Uh, and, like, eventually when you kill him, and you can kind of see that the only part that's human is his head, and that the rest of it is this like Gundam body that you had to hmm. fight. But in the pre sequel, you take uh, you you get to play him, and while you're leveling up, you like he is like all of his perks and stuff is replacing parts of his body with <laughs> mechanized things that he has, and they describe it as he has an addiction to body modification, that like. Uh, that, that this is like I don't know. There's a part of that practical side that he's a mercenary and he wants his mercenary like his mercenary skill comes from like all these you know uh, modifications that he's doing to himself. But then there's a, a whole other psychological issue of I don't know body issues of who he wants to be like that's being. Like battle, I don't know. Yeah, that's I, like battle angel status. Yeah. So I think it's way. I think that'd be a cool thing, and I'd love to have more of those like. Uh, uh, crossover technology things and not just there's a robot in my fantasy game like I think that's really boring when you're playing with a bunch of people that are pretty much playing Lord of the Rings and then there's one dude that's a robot like <laughs> doesn't work like I'm sure Legolas would kick fuck tons of ass if he could have a gun like <laughs> like if there were, oh not that there's guns in Eberron that's just a cannon but you know what I mean like and I, I don't know. I can see that. Uh, so that's where that's where I want it. <laughs> where right. I think it'd be kind of fun. Well, okay. And so then the last question that I'll close out this segment with is, what is the most awesome um, addition you can think of to a Forge, and what is the silliest addition you can think of? So the most awesome one that I can think of is um the first the first thought that comes to my head is just like a more a more dangerous looking head unit 
but also just like you know two extra arms would be friggin awesome because then there's more there's more utility that you could do with that the silliest thing that i can think of is and then the, again, the first thought that comes to my mind because I'm looking at your at your protester there is like a soda stream, a soda stream dispenser on his chest. <laughs> it's just, I'm not just a stabilizer. I also dispense sodas. Yeah, um, I've got a degree in soda dispensing. <laughs> uh, but also, I think I mean I've seen it weaponized, so I can see it be um just equally as scary as say like a knife or something but um egg beaters egg, egg beaters, beaters on the hands chef bot <laughs> no <laughs> so, it's not a chef it's just egg beaters it can only make it can only make soups <laughs> <laughs> it can only make soups and uh, meringues <laughs> i think That'd be kind of that'd be interesting. I don't, I don't know, dude. He has goals. He has goals. Like he has very specific, like specialized episodes in Iron Chef. But like, saving up money so he can finally get that that um the butcher knife add on. <laughs> <laughs> I get that's that'd be an awesome character. <laughs> Trying to go out and fight like so that he can save up to get like the sous chef package <laughs> all right most most awesome idea most silliest idea go i want you to uh, expand upon that like awesome heads what are you talking about so um i'm uh i just ever since i was little i've always kind of hated the human kind of shape of a head like i was always into like you know, give me that, give me that more like lizard kind of like triangular kind of head. Give me that more like, you know, canine sort of, again, more triangular or rectangular kind of shape sort of thing. So if you give them more jaw like, like functions, I think it would be a lot cooler. Plus you can ah. expand on that and be like, all right, so you can also have like, you know, not horns but like you could give them like a I mean, you can give them horns but like you know you can give them like metal spikes for like a mohawk or you can let them spit <laughs> you can make them spit stuff you could have you know um snake or uh, viper like snake teeth so that not only for combat but can also decork your wine bottle <laughs> so okay. think about that right <laughs> and i oh, guess yeah. I guess the depiction of the humanized head for that would be more for like beer bottles, you know, but snake head, wine bottles, it's a little more classy. <laughs> the, the Warford Sommelier. <laughs> Damn king. All right. Yeah, that'll be. <laughs> So it looks like you're leaning towards scissor heads as the silliest thing, but I don't want to influence your choice. Nah, fuck that. <laughs> I want, like, really... What was it? Are you Mega Man Battle Network or something? I don't know. The Game Boy one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. They had some cool cool robots and things in there. Um, but I do remember that it was, like, a slightly cooler version of Cut Man. Cut Man. Huh. The worst and the most canon. <laughs> fuck Cut Man. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. I, there was a part of me that wanted to make a cool cut, man, because I always made sword like when you optimize all the weapons and like techniques and like things that you had. Like I tried to make it all sword based. Like I do that in almost every game. So I was like, you know what? Maybe, maybe cut man would be my little like Mega Man Navi, or I don't know. Man, the Mega <laughs> yeah, Man you're the there. you're the returning villain that like for the first two levels you're like the weakest, stupidest looking thing in the in the game, and then you're finally like, all right, Mega Man, you beat me this third time, but you won't do it a last time, and you go away for like f you know four chapters, and then you come back in the fifth chapter and you're like the yeah. final boss. <laughs> Scissor app, bro. Are you ready for this? <laughs> uh, so I don't know. I think. The most pointless upgrades? <sighs> oh, also for consideration, the 
ability to change the Warforge's eye color. It has no function. The eyes are maybe the smallest part on the body and won't ever really be noticed by a lot of people. But it's just like, hey, <laughs> change from red to blue to green. <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe it'd be really creepy hanging out and having a like casual conversation with a red-eyed Warforge. It's like, come on, turn on blue mode, please. It's hard <laughs> to take you serious. Or it's hard to not take you serious. All right, so, cool. Yeah. So sorry. So sorry. Your your silliest your silliest add on. I'll I'll shut up. <laughs> no, I I don't know. I like the options of all the different possibilities uh, that that could be. I mean, scissor head is like very very strange. I think there's tons of ways to be very bizarre as a robot, but then it just adds to a like. The conundrum of who built you, or like <laughs> the other strange thing of like you thought that was a good idea. I'm like, like yeah, I wanted scissors on my head. Like why? Well, because and why? why? And why on the head? Because <laughs> he hates spiders. So it was like instead of ducking, it just like cuts up all the webs that are in the way. <laughs> that's, that's the job. <laughs> like ah, fuck you, spiders. Uh, I don't know. I think there's plenty of dumb things that could happen. Uh, and so many more possibilities, that would be great. Like, I don't know, if you saw that, like, there was an Acquisitions Incorporated one uh, where a golem, like, busted through the wall. The little keg bots, and they were just, like, little things of healing potions or oh, stuff. I do kind of remember that. That was, yeah. that was a weird I, twist, yeah. It was. <laughs> <laughs> it's so dumb, but I don't know. Maybe that's what it wants. Maybe it wants to be like the best beer, like that it gave we've ever had. And it just, just wants walking around with a beer keg, <laughs> being a beer keg. <laughs> uh... <laughs> like and like, I don't want it. I don't. I don't. I would not drink from the beer keg, like a uh, robot. But I know people that would. Oh man, that reminds me of Bender's story. <laughs> that remind, that, yeah, that reminds me of Bender's story where he was built and his and his primary function was to bend angles, but only <laughs> but only ninety degree angles. Can't do forty five. <laughs> he can't do thirty eight. Only right angle. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. I think because it's always that same argument of like, what are you going to do with like a person? Uh, or a robot, or what is it when they start making choices that you think are wrong, but they think are right? Like, if it really just wanted to hug things, and it got upgrades to its armor to all just be like, uh, um, I don't know, memory foam, so it can just give the best hugs. Like, you a weird-ass robot, and I have no purpose for you. Maybe. I don't know. Sometimes I need a hug. So, I'll come back to you. <laughs> but right now, put your battle gear on. We have to fight a dragon. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but, best upgrades? The, the upgrade that I want to see? Um, like how I said, I would want to play a character that is interested in taking on human, or taking on robot upgrades, and having prosthetics. I would love to see a Warforge that wants to take on, like, uh, bio upgrades. I think that would be weird and kind of interesting to, like, explore. So it's like the reverse gizmo duck? Yeah, I don't know what that is. Dang it! Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. Um, basically, it's, it's cool. just this, it's, it's this fleshy human person that says a keyword and then all these robotic parts kind of it, originally they popped out of him but now they kind of fly out from a storage place and just kind of attach on top of him huh okay but yeah kind of like a go-go gadget kind of guy yeah okay. but more serious um but i think that would be really cool like like say uh no maybe maybe they can't cast magic because they need biological material so they grafted like I don't know. So uh, I, can, like, I can see this going into several bots to them because those are pretty intelligent. And, oh, okay. And now yeah. it has like it's a cake bot that has like a cephalopod arm that it uses the cast magic with. 
That's and weird. it just keeps him hydrated. I don't know. Yeah, so so I saw this going in two different directions. Either one, it like downloads the um, or it like analyzes the features of what it wants to emulate, and so it, it is able to do that. And I guess if it wanted to look like it more, it could like get like metal kind of like face plates and just kind of like put it on top and just be like, I am now human. I am now cobalt. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But then there's the more there's the more horror aspect of it in which it goes out and it basically um, Texas Chainsaw massacres people and just wears the, wears them. Mm -hmm. I, am so, now, I am now Susie. <laughs> shameless plug, guys. Eberron is really fucking cool, and I haven't seen this crossover yet, but in Eberron, um, the aberrants and stuff the like i don't know mind flares and beholders and other weird things that come from the plane of madness and all that they uh they there's portions that exist in the underdark and like the the, the world that exists underground and there uh there are people that or groups that grow sentient uh objects things that exist like clothing uh, or like armor that's like sentient, that it's like a carapace-like shell that lives on you. But on the inside, what it does is it eats the detritus off of your body to survive. So it's always kind of like cleaning you. And then if you happen to get hurt and injured, it uses its blood to fuse with you and like heals you. Like, which is really wow. cool and fucking nasty. I don't want to wear <laughs> Like it's just like sucking on my body. Wow, like, that but, went in an extreme different direction. <laughs> it was like, oh, look at how cute it is. Burn it with fire. <laughs> yeah. So I think it. I think Eberron is badass. But I would love to see a, like an, uh, a Warforge end up finding this place that has living gloves that specialize in certain skills and thinking like, man, you're just like me. I'm gonna be a flesh person with these like flesh hands. Yay. <laughs> The more I look uh, at your at your scissor head, Warforged, uh, the more I get the vibes of a woman at the hair salon with like a bunch of curls underneath mm -hmm. the the hair dryer dome thing, mm -hmm. sitting there going, you know, oh how's 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 Bobby doing today? <laughs> do you hear what do you hear what Susie said? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can't believe she couldn't trim that hedge in under two point five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I was de I was designed to do it in under one point five seconds. But you know her; she used to be back uh, back in the war. Uh, she was just oh. like a food bot. Uh, bless her soul, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad she's all, taking the initiative. All of their all they they would be those robots. So back in the war, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just that one robot that's just like. Back in old war, we didn't have scissors on head. We had scissors yeah. in hand. Secretly, this one is like super badass. Uh, and now and it that looks, all with those used two to extra other ones that they stole from. Yeah, with those two uh, extra scissors, it looks a lot cooler now for some reason. I don't know why three scissors made it look like a woman at the hair salon, but now it looks actually like really punk rock. <laughs> It's strange. I don't know. I can't quantify why, but <laughs> there you go. Scissorbot. So, and um, one topic that I state. wanted to reach was, um, like, other other body modifications that aren't just, like, replacing a limb. So, like, um, the concept of tattoos, like, the equivalent of tattoos on us, what would, you know, their equivalent be? Like, would they actually just get decals, or would they actually, like, get laser etchings? But... Yeah. We are unfortunately out of time for this segment. So Yeah, so we'll... all of you out there in internet land, start making me some uh looked out like Cholo low rider uh <laughs> versions of Warforges. Uh that will be sick. Uh <laughs> Okay. Yeah. That could be a cool another one. Uh, board, both Borderlands and there was this other video game which I don't remember what it was called it was like really like first generation uh, Xbox um, but they those, uh, Borderlands had like the gun manufacturers and that game had like 
different uh, manufacturers. I guess Armor Core had manufacturers, and they had their own style. So if you were buying from the like the Japanese inspired one, you were getting super like I don't know clean looking modern spacey things. But you could buy from like the American uh, Jeep factory one <laughs> and get that grunge tough look that like that you can still see all the rivets on it. Like, and I I'd imagine. I think it'd be interesting to see like like the different like Canon houses that cater to these robots of like oh yeah I want a really pearled chassis fuck yeah uh, and then get the decals of the stripes and the unicorns on the back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, <laughs> my left arm my left arm is from a Japanese maker, but my right arm looks like a Jeep. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right, and so with that. Let's wrap it up and send it off. Um, so as always, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, please like, comment, and do all your stuff down so. But more importantly, send images to even. Um, <laughs> or you can watch this live on usually, I'm trying to aim for Saturdays uh, and or the odd Sunday, but live at um, Foxstar, and don't forget the underscore. Um, twitch.tv uh, if you don't you could also send images to my Instagram at snapshima um, and then or more importantly and you'd probably also get some critique on it more immediately you can send it to Evan's Instagram at evenstarlong yeah. <laughs> and I will look at your stuff and probably say good things and tell you unless you ask me to say Say some bad things or critique it, because I could dish it out if you want. But for the most part, I just like stuff. It's more yeah, and I'd, al I'd also like to add a segment to the show that actually showcases a lot of these alternative alternative um, designs and, and such yeah. like that. Um, so with that, thank you for tuning in, and I hope to see you next time. Laters! Bye!